All right, one more video overview tonight. We'll do full spec number five. It came out in April, so it's a little bit more fresh in my memory. We had a great launch party at Quillbridge Books for it. The Becca Gomez Farrell was there. We had our artists, artists in the house. Uh, David Halperin was there. Dran was not there. Uh, and Mark Blake was there. Let's see. John, Jay Record was there. J.M. McDermott was there. Um, Ada Malenkovic Brown was there. It was a good time. And Tanya and Jane, of course, were there. So uh, let's jump in to issue five. Uh, again, great support from Pyre, one of our I don't know, platinum sponsors, but they've been longtime sponsors now. You can see our big time curious case of the Clockwork Man push here. Um, kind of unchanged contents that uh, kind of what I do found a couple of bugs here didn't uncapitalize Mark M. David Blake's name I told him about it and he said what? Uh, my name's in all caps and you're saying this is a problem but yeah yeah it's a problem but I mess up the contents page all the time so here uh, Chaos Continuum by Preston Grassman this is a kind of a soft ethereal almost fantasy um, got a little illustration by Jason Strutz, kind of boy overlooking these broken train tracks, this kind of sketchy train coming out of somewhere. It's a very short piece, but um, it's been a lot of people's favorites. So they, I've got a lot of comments about how much people have liked this one, and I really enjoyed it as well. So hopefully, hopefully you do too. Now here's our, our kind of our feature length story for the issue. Uh, local author Rebecca Gomez Farrell. It's called Bother. It's basically a, our dragon in the city story. And um, cover illustration from Richard Case, I should have mentioned. So Richard Case is a local artist who has done work uh, on Sandman and uh, some other comics. But um, this is his first job for me, and uh, he went on. He's done art for issue six as well. So let me get back to where I was. And so I did some little inset pieces here with uh, pieces out of that cover art. So here's uh, another local illustrator, Angie Shearstone. Um, she's illustrated, the PDF version is a nice in color, so you can see the color in there. But this is uh, Tim Pratt's Hell's Lottery. And uh, so it's basically a lottery in hell. And it's uh, a story that has a, a pretty you know, interesting message about suicide and the um, and importance and of life and all this stuff. So I really liked it. And uh, it's definitely a different kind of story than what we've done before. It's definitely a Tim Pratt story, if you know what I mean. Hopefully you'll like it. Here's a quirky little story from Cat Rambo called The Coffee Maker's Passion. We got a little kind of sketch, sketch-sized artwork from Adam Muse. He did a great job. I told him, write me a, a coffee maker that's alive and then draw me a coffee maker that's alive. And he came up with that for us. Um, there's an illustrator created there. Kind of a two-page, four-column story. And it's, again, quirky, kind of a good little biting sense of humor. And... Uh, I really, I really, I dug it. Again, I gave gave the issuer just a, a good variety of humor and, and science fiction, fantasy, and different stuff. So this now has be, became the longest story we've printed so far. It's a reprint. It's a story I first read at Corrosion.org many years ago. Not many years ago. Several years ago. <laughs> and uh, kind of got lost in the world. I don't think too many SF critics or readers really found it on this website. Um... I've really never stopped uh, thinking about this series of stories. It's actually a, a long series of stories by Roger, and he's also got a, a self kind of self-published novel, *The Metamorphosis of Prime Intellect*. It's also online on his website, uh, local Roger. And um, but this was probably my favorite of his stories, and so I wrote him. We wrote back and forth, and I just didn't know when I'd be able to fit a ten thousand word story into an issue, and kind of made it fit into this issue by trimming these other things out. But it, it took some formatting things and. Um, it's kind of this multi-versioned AI that stretches across, you know, from now through plus 115 million years and plus 1.2 billion years. And so it's an epic scope, to say the least. So um, I really hope you like it and I hope you, you further that you go and check out his other stories in that universe and his other stories. Uh, here's another local author. This is um, Hillsborough's M. David Blake, who we know as Mark. This is Absinthe Fish. This is a strange one. Um, man, when he sent it to me and I read it, I knew I wanted it. I had no idea what people would think of it. 
Um, I got a good feeling that people were going to get it when uh, Mike Gallagher, who's done lots of uh, lots of artwork for me and did the the year one graphic short, came out with this, uh, this illustration. I, I started to get a good feeling people were going to get it, and uh, apparently I got it all wrong because when when Mark did his reading of it, it was so funny, and my reading of it was so serious. But uh, when Mark read it, his he wasn't reading it in a funny way. It just the timing and everything when the when it was read. I mean, the crowd was laughing, and it was great. So it just shows the kind of the different ways people can react to the same story. Again, a quirky story. Uh, boy, it's weird. And you should just read it and check it out. That's not that long of a story, so definitely check it out. Uh, this was a, kind of a fun thing to do. Jeff Vandermeer and Ann Vandermeer started with this this new imprint for for ebooks called Cheeky Frog Books. And when he first started blogging and Facebooking about it, I thought for sure it was another joke. There's no way. Okay, very funny. But no, it turns out this is a pretty serious thing here. I mean, he's got real books, but real authors. He's got original fiction anthologies coming, um, bringing in fiction from uh, from different countries. And wow, it was totally not a joke at all. Now, the... the uh, well, whatever. Anyway. And then one thing here, okay, I'll check it out. The Messengers by Benjamin Paul. So we had a teen writing contest where I gave people a thousand word limit and Ben's story came in at exactly a thousand words. He really nailed it. Um, the theme was uh, teen siblings trying to stop a war. And he tells this just great kind of really well-paced story of, of these siblings trying to get a message to these war, to these armies approaching each other. And uh, again, he nailed it. Did a great job, and he came and read the whole story to us at the launch party, and uh, it was just a great, great thing. All right, so Fiasco. Uh, this is actually an interview that I did with uh, the guys behind Fiasco, Jason Morningstar and Steve Segedy at Bully Pulpit Games. We finished the interview in time for issue four and just couldn't fit it into the issue, so it got kind of bumped over here, but um, they're you know getting lo local game designers. Fiasco is a very interesting role-playing game setting. It's um, what's called, I don't know the technical terms for this stuff, basically this kind of free-form storytelling game um, where you, you have a setup period and then it's kind of just, don't, you don't really need a bunch of pieces or parts, you just kind of need some note cards and and uh, a willingness to tell a, a Fargo-type story of a small-time caper going wrong. And it's just a lot of fun. Um, it's, it's really, it's building a huge, uh, following worldwide. It's got great blurbs from Will Wheaton and some other folks. And, um, it's been translated into Brazilian and Russian and all kinds of fun stuff. And so I had a pretty good interview with them. It's also, uh, is the first installment of the far, four part, The Long Lives of Heroes. This is, uh, Jeremy Whitley story and Jason Strutt's art. And, um... Of course, Jason's been doing a, some the cover work for me for a while and some other illustrations. And he'll, he'll be keep doing uh, more illustrations for me because he gets them done and does them well. And I really appreciate all he's done for us. So this is the, the first installment. Um, black and white means a, a lot cheaper printing for me. And they, they still manage to tell a great story with it. And uh, I've seen part two now. Part two will be on newsstands starting early next week. And it's already out on PDF online. So... You can already get to part two, and we'll all have to wait for parts three and four because I have no idea where it's going. <laughs> so we close out the um, fiasco interview. And we actually got an interview from Preston Grassman, who was a story contributor in the beginning of this issue. He entered Hanu Rayanemi about the quantum thief, and that was really cool. It got me really interested in Hanu. I, I since read the book and read some of his short stories, like his master's voice, which was a really cool short story. So definitely definitely check out Hanu. And there's a dashing Hanu Rajanemi. And um, we got a, an ad spot here from Small Beer Press. Um, Gavin over at Small Beer has been really supportive of both spec from the beginning with advice, and also his Weightless Books um, kind of ebook bookstore without DRM has been carrying both spec for a while, and now they're picking up Locus magazine. So that's great news. I think it's great news for people who like ebooks and want to see ebooks with a good DRM free future. So way to go. 
Gavin, a new Jeff Ryman book. Jeff is one of those authors who I've not read yet, and I just always hear so much great things about. And boy, I need to find time to get into him. So here's a kind of, I guess, our feature length interview of the issue. Uh, Jonathan Strahan, Strahan, I'll never pronounce it correctly. Uh, it's Life on Mars, and the PDF color version that stands out so well. It's nice and red, Mars, but in black and white it kind of turned into gray on gray and disappeared. But that's me learning what I'm doing as I do it, unfortunately. So we started with a brief intro, but then Paul Kincaid, I turned to him for a review of this anthology, Life on Mars. It's um, basically, uh, I just happened to come across this book. I was at McIntyre's Books in Pittsburgh, you know, Farrington Village. It's halfway to Pittsburgh, really. And... Um, and uh, one of the booksellers there handed the book to me. I read the introduction. And I was just, oh, wow, definitely. It's about, you know, why have we stopped thinking about going to Mars? Why have we stopped thinking about this kind of science fiction thing? It co- totally seems to have disappeared. We're, we're grounded or we're dystopian focused. And no one's writing about this simple terraforming or colonization type thing anymore. And so uh, he put this together, this anthology, the Cory Doctorow and tons of other a ton of the writers, Nettie or Cora for. Anyway, so um, Paul reviews reviews uh, the anthology, and then then uh, Jonathan gave me just this great long interview. We talked about bunches of stuff. Um, we talked about Kish Johnson because he he's been picking her stories, um, both for his Eclipse anthology and for some of his years best for a while now, and you know well deserved. And uh, it was great to talk to outside people about about uh, the local writers that I really like. Um, we talked about you know ebooks and transitions and what his perspective is on anthologies as he does so many of them, and it was a great time. It was just a, it's a, just a really good exchange, and I really enjoyed getting to know him a little better. So here we got a, a nice advertisement from uh, Igax Brass and Steel Visors. Unfortunately, the really cool custom bull spec ones that um, that Paul gave me uh, are not here for me to show you right now, but I'll, I'll have a video of them pretty soon. But he can, these are handmade with a plasma torch out here in Garner, North Carolina. So check them out. You can actually see so much out of these little visors. They're really cool. And uh, again, thanks for the, the support uh, with an ad. All right. So, David Halperin. I met David at a, a I want to say Raleigh, Raleigh Writers Group meetup or Triangle Writers Group meetup. I've been kind of hopping around trying to meet local people and uh, see wh- who was writing what. And um, boy, right from the beginning, David was just really nice to talk to, really excited about his book, and um, just really willing to talk about the whole process of finding an agent, getting published, and all that stuff. So Journal of a UFO Investigator, it's published as a mainstream fiction novel by Viking. And um, as Richard Dansky's really well-done review notes, it's not really science fiction. It's kind of an alternating um, sequences of of this young boy, Danny Shapiro, coming of age and dealing with the really messed up stuff that's going on in his own life. His mother's dying slowly. His parents' marriage is not, not that great. He's having personal problems. And he deals with this by kind of going into this fantasy world of um, this UFO journal he was writing. And, you know, the chapters alternate, the, the lines between what's real and what's not are really blurring. You can really see this one-for-one one correspondence between his, his journal entries and what's going on in his real life. It's just a really good book. And, you know, it's not science fiction, but you guys should check it out anyway. Um, so Richard Dansky reviewed it really well, and then he and David went to town. Richard Dansky knows his UFO, UFOlogy, UFOlogy, however you want to say that. I don't even know how to say it. And uh, Richard Dansky definitely does. And this really long interview talking about the different Judaic themes in the book. David Halpern is an eminent Judaic scholar. And um, it was just a great interview. I really enjoyed it. And it it went in lots of directions I wouldn't have thought of. And um, thanks, Richard, for turning in a great review. Thanks, David, for your time and and, uh, doing that for us. And David also came out to the launch party and read as well. All right. Another person I've discovered as I've tried to do this deeper dive into North Carolina science fiction is Charlotte author Gail Z. Martin. So this is her new book. It was new last February. Her, she, of course, she has her, it might be closer to the next book than it was to that book. 
Um, she was a Solaris Books author for her first four books. Now she's with Orbit Books. And um, so I've, uh, I've checked out that series, read The Summoner, kind of skimmed a little bit, and then read back into The, sw the Swarm so we could have this interview. And uh, Gail gave me plenty of time, wrote back and forth with me, and turned in a great interview with me, and I really appreciated it. And you guys should check it out. I mean, there's five books in. There's six books coming out soon. And uh, Chronicles of the Necromancer. And then this new series is called The Fallen King Cycle. But it always continues the same story. So, Joe Giddings. Joe had turned in a few good reviews for me. And uh, he has a blog, The Clockwork Pen. And so we kind of decided to play around a bit with the format of Bull Spec And give him two pages to have like a three-review feature. So... That's something we, we went ahead and did again in issue six, but with a different reviewer in the area. Joe is a Greenville writer and uh, critic. So he took took on three steampunk stories for me. Um, Mike Resnick's The Buttline Special, Clockwork Man, The Curious Case of, a Mark Hodder, and uh, The Society of Steam. So it, it gave him a chance to kind of survey a few different steampunk books that are out there, compare them against each other, and um, get them all in one shot. And, uh, again, thanks, Joe, for turning in some great reviews for us. Um, then I have got some reviews from other people here. A review of The Called, which is a Warren Rochelle novel. A review from a really short review from Fred Chappell. So I have not met Fred. I don't know if I've even written with him directly other than via postal mail. But uh, he let me reprint this or print this uh, short review of The Called and so I was really happy to lead off with that. I'm hoping to get more from Fred in future. He's a, a Greensboro area writer, and um, it was just it's been one of the, again one of those things. We're trying to do a deeper dive across North Carolina to get more of what's going on in the whole area, who's writing and who and what they're writing. So that's how I discovered Fred, and that's how I got his review. Let me have a review of Sacred Space by Paul Kincaid. He's the reviewer on it, and the author is Douglas E. Cowan. This is from Baylor University Press. It's a nonfiction kind of um, analysis across science fiction, film, and other media, mostly, of um, the search for transcendence as corresponding in science fiction and what's going on there. So Paul takes a really nice, nice space of, to you know analyze the book, give his own thoughts on what what's going on, and um, I always find it really fascinating. And we got a review of Songs of the Dying Earth. Review by Richard Dansky. Um, review of The Lost Gate. Um, and then we had a, a review of Welcome to the Greenhouse. This is um, all original new science fiction on uh, global warming and cli climate change. It's edited by um, the magazine of fantasy and science fiction's editor, Gordon Van Gelder. And it's published by Orr Books. And so we, I can't remember how I came across that. Oh, I came across that book... Um, Nick Mamatas had been on this uh, SF Signal Roundtable. Uh, what, what did they do? Talking about the future of publishing, and he, he had signaled out OR, or books, OR books as one of these new, leaner, direct print kind of uh, smaller houses that might be one of the future models for, for publishing. So I was like, okay, Nick, let's, let's see what you think of one of their books. So got him welcome to the greenhouse. And um, Nick liked some of the stories. Um, some more than others, and uh, but he wasn't really happy with the introduction um, from Mr. Van Gelder. But um, again, give give him plenty of space to make his argument, to analyze the anthology, and um, talk about what he liked and what he didn't like. So hope you guys check out the review and then the book. Then we had a, another long review, though not nearly as long as the giant giant book. A review of the Wise Man's Fear. Um, this is reviewed by by uh, Durham writer Brian Howe. Um, Wise Man's Fear is book two, of course, in uh, Patrick Rothfuss's uh, book series started with The Name of the Wind. So, a big book, deserved a big review, so we got one. And I think we close the review section here. Oh, man, I had this book in my trunk. I could have showed it to you. This is uh, Monstrous Creatures. It's a review is by um, Carbro, Carbro's John Bowker. It's um, of Jeff Vandermeer's non-fiction collection, so it's some of his essays and reviews kind of organized and sorted into a few sections. And um, let's see, there's a pretty nice quote uh, from John. It's a message in a, bo in a bottle from someone who made it. So um, thanks, John, for turning in a good review for me. 
Uh, then we had a, a kind of weird piece. I, I, don't, I met Dan Kimmel at NASFIC last year, and we talked about, you know, what, how if he had a piece that might, might work for me. And uh, he has this, this really uh, kind of intriguingly titled book, Jar Jar Binks Must Die, and other observations about science fiction movies. So basically, it's a huge collection of, of essays and or reviews of these classic sci-fi movies. And so he took on Atomic Ants, or Them, and uh, at length. And so I was happy to print this pretty close to the um, publication date of the book. So it's a, it was a kind of a, a fun little partnership, and I had never heard of the film. And now I know a pretty good amount about it. So that was that. Um, okay, so we got some more poetry edited by Dan Campbell. So selected and edited by Dan Campbell. Alexander Seidel. It's not her first poem in both spec. And Kellen Fire. I think it's his third, maybe fourth contribution to both spec. So, and I closed with a editorial here. Um, I kind of had to combine it with the happenings. I, I said when when I was starting this little video overview, I had to cut some things to fit some of those longer stories into this issue. One of the things I had to cut was my good old two-page happening spread. So I kind of compressed that and made that into my editorial talking about um, the new audiobook for Lewis Shiner's Glimpses. It's an unbelievable audiobook narrated by Stefan Rudnicki. You've got you've to listen to that, if you, especially if you haven't read the book. You've definitely got to do it. Um, also talked about what's coming up in just a few days, the Cabinet of Curiosities Literary Extravaganza. So Anna Jeff Vandermeer, Katarina Sevilla, Sadia, S.J. Chambers, Merle Lafferty, Scott Eagle, Hayden Wilson, all converging on Durham's Fulstein Brewery on Saturday. So... Come out and check it out. That's the Punk Bible, Cabinet of Curiosities, other good stuff. And I closed it by talking about, you know, how do we get, we've got Jeff, this is great, but how do we get George R. R. Martin to come? How do we get Lev Grossman to come? Well, apparently all I have to do is write a bunch of publicists and bookstores and tell them to talk to each other, and eventually they come. So Lev is actually coming on August 30th to Folly Books. So hooray for us. Inside back cover ad from PM Press. Um, new collection from Terry Bisson, still my favorite short story writer. Love his Bears' Cover Fire and um, collection. This is his new collection, TVA Baby. Um, that that cover story is so weird. Oh my gosh. Um, and then they have this really, really cool outspoken author series. Terry Bisson has an entry in it called um, The Left Left Behind. This is Ursula K. Le Guin's, uh The Wild Girls. It's another outspoken author series book. And they should definitely check out what they're doing over PM Press. They've kind of they're kind of jump starting this speculative fiction or spectacular fiction is what they're calling it. This kind of line of um I call it speculative fiction, but um of books. And they got Fire on the Mountain from Terry Bisson, Left Up Behind, like I said. Another outspoken author series is The Lucky Strike from Kim Stanley Robinson. Um they've got a Michael Moorcock. And uh, coming soon, we're going to have an outspoken author from Cory Doctorow and more Michael Moorcock. So definitely check out what they're doing. And the back cover ad here is from Solaris Books. So thanks, guys. And that's it. That, that is before, as of today, the five print the five print issues of both specs are in existence, although issue six should be in boxes somewhere in the Appalachian Mountains on its way here. so And it's also already online, the PDF. So come check it out. Hope you enjoyed this overview. I think that catches me up as to where we are so I can uh, get a issue six overview, hopefully within three months of it actually being published.